All right, Coach, just give, give us all an overview of the uh, – of the game and the spring practice? Well, you know, I, I, I will say this. You know, we, we continue to do what we've done throughout spring. Uh, we had an opportunity to work on some situations. Um, but at the same time, you know, I wanted to make sure we didn't get as injured as maybe some other places would. So did a great job of protecting our offensive line, did a really, really good job of protecting our defensive line. But we also got a chance to look at our quarterbacks, our receivers, and our running backs in space. Uh, you know, while I was on the field and watching Richardson and Junior throw the ball to Jeremiah Pruitt and Kobe Gross and Jamari Gassett and Yant and Dean and et cetera and et cetera, um, offensively, if, if we're lining up and snapping the ball, on time, we can be a really, really, really good offense. Now, and obviously, we've been a really, really good offense since I've been here. But I think we got a, a lot of weapons, uh, and then obviously the guys that we're adding to the adding to our offense makes us equally dangerous. Now, defensively, you know, we got some guys that you know obviously that are in the portal right now, um, and, and obviously we're doing some recruiting defensively to make sure that if we do lose guys in the portal, so you know we gave up three touchdowns today, and that's not that's not the standard that the defense have set. So you know we, we we did some good things turnover wise, but I didn't think we. We played as fast as we normally have played on the defensive side. So offensively, extremely happy with what Coach Henry's doing. Defensively, you know, we got to make sure we show up some things personnel-wise to make sure we are where we need to be once we start the season. Coach, your first spring game, give us a sense of what it is as the head coach. Uh, a little bit about just being in that position and knowing that the outcome is what you got to deal with. Well, you know, it, it's part of it's part of it, right? You know, I, I obviously, you know, you got cameras following you. You know, you're doing these type of interviews, and again, that comes with the position. Uh, and, and I'm and I'm and I'm definitely used to it and ready for it, right? So the pressure is not just on the quarterbacks or my or the, or the defense. You know, the pressure is on myself as well, and you know, and I'm used to it, right? So, but you know, I, I like I liked how we finished, right? I liked how we finished. We we did a really really good job improving in certain things, but after the spring, you get a chance to assess and evaluate where you are. And we'll do that starting Monday. How do you handle the, that the target is on A and M back? Well, I mean, I mean, I, I, I'm, when you're the reigning national champions, that, that's where it's supposed to be, right? So, you know, last the last two years as an assistant and assistant head coach, you know, we knew that we were going to get the best from every single team that we played. So, what's going to change this year? Nothing. We're going to get the best from every single team that we played. The target is now you, you, you're not just beating FAMU, but you're beating the reigning national champion. So, our guys know that. We've got a really, really veteran group. You know, with, with the, the veteran group of our offensive line, those guys understand the pressure that we're under. I'm extremely happy to have those guys on our football team. I'm glad I don't have to go against those guys every day, right? I'm glad I'm not the team that has to go against them, you know, every week. So, but, you know, we, we understand the pressure. We understand that the target are on our back and you know believe it or not we'll, we'll still be ready to play one way or the other coach i got a chance to ask uh kelvin dean and kendall bowler i said how's been that transition as with coach coach as the head coach kendall bowler said you're more streak he said you don't play the radio with him uh <laughs> you're late for a meeting y'all but can you reflect on your first spring i know y'all didn't get to do the full 15 practices because of the weather but right. how was that first spring really jumping in and being that head football coach here at florida and well you know uh, Obviously, this being my second opportunity being a head coach, you know, I'm actually learning some things from what I did as a first time head coach, right? So, you know, there's just certain things that, you know, we need. And, you know, and I'm asking the coaches more as opposed to my way, you know, I mean, hey, Coach Henry, what do you need this week? Or what do you need today? Coach Patterson, what do you need today, right? I'm asking more from our coordinators and asking them what they need so I can help them along as they go through spring practice, right? Now, ultimately, at the end of the day, the practices and then how we finish and, and, and what we've shown on the field, yes. It's on my shoulders, but being able to uh, uh, talk to the guys as a head coach is a heck of a lot different than talking to them as the defensive back coach. And Kendall Bowler is right. Yeah, I'm you know I'm I'm a little bit different as the as the head coach, and I as a, am as a DB coach. But you know I guess that's because of the pay scale that I'm under right now. <laughs> you, you're working on your staff. You're putting together a playbook. You're dealing yep. with the portal. How are you working with handling those moving parts? And where are you in terms of your expectation of having it all settled down before the start of fall practice? Well, believe it or not, I'm, I'm extremely happy to, to, to say and show that we, you know, we're fully staffed now. You know, and, and, and being able to say that means that a lot of the things that I might have been doing over the last week or two are now going to end. You know what I mean? I, you know, I get a chance to now do a little bit more football than maybe some of the operational thing that I, that I was doing at that time. So, you know, uh, uh, 
it, it, again, it's part of it, but you know, it's it's part of the transition, it's part of the changeover that we've had as a staff. But if I sit up here and dwell on it, that means I'm not getting the work done, right? So if I'm not getting the work done, my players suffer. If my players are suffering, my team is suffering. If my team is suffering, the university is suffering. So I, I can assure you this, Jackson State is not worried about me not having all the necessary pieces that I had two or three weeks ago. It was time for me to go to work. We had to do it. We had people wearing different hats. And I wasn't the only one wearing different hats, right? So, but nobody's gonna feel sorry for me. Nobody's gonna feel sorry for us. Believe me, I understand that. So, hey, we got we had work to get done. We got we got our, we got our practices in. We got our spring game in. Now, we'll, you know, portal opens up. We'll start. We'll continue to do the recruiting that we've been doing. You know, and now we got to bring our, some of the missing pieces that we need to make sure that we are, you know, the true reigning national champions and ready to compete once the season starts. Yeah, coach, is, this, is this the, your dream job? You know, it's pretty high up there. You know what I mean? And, you know, and I don't, you know, not a lot of people know I got a chance to spend some time with Rudy Hubbard this morning and, and you know, the connection that my family has with him. Uh, you know, believe it or not, I mean, people have asked me how long uh, will I be here, et cetera, et cetera. I'm, it's going to be up to how long family wants me here. You know, that's how I see it. I mean, this is, you know, believe it or not, this is one of the top jobs for me in the country. I love coming to work every single day. I love being around the people that I get a chance to see every single day. The amount of text messages, the amount of calls that I receive as the head football coach, you know, it, it, it does become a little bit overwhelming, but it's also part of the job and I understand it and I'm, and I'm excited to be able to come in here every single day. Have y'all seen my parking spot that I have when I come in here? No. <laughs> hey, man, believe me, that, that, that means somebody likes me just a little bit to allow me to be where I'm at. So. Again, the people have been great. People are wonderful. I, but I also understand there are, there are expectations with this position, and the expectations are to win, right? The expectations are to win, make sure the product is great on the field, make sure we're graduating our players, and making sure that those guys are properly, properly res representing this university all the time. I want you guys talked about a critical time. Right now is the, is the coming down the stretch of the spring semester. What are you doing to encourage you guys to make sure they handle what they need to off the field in the classroom to make sure that it's a smooth transition to have as many players as you can in the summer to get us to jump? Well, you know, it, it, it. What's being, being over with right now, obviously school is, is important. We're going to still be lifted next week, the next two weeks, but final exams. Now, hey, we actually have coaches right now in study hall throughout the week. So I'm actually one of the coaches that handles study hall just to make sure our guys are doing what they need to do and making sure Kerry can do the job that she needs to do, right? So we're trying to eliminate some of the past issues that may come across as far as academically. But, you know, hey, they understand it. We understand it. Proper communication with them. We'll have our end of the, you know, end of the spring meetings just to let them know where they stand and how they see how we see them and you know again communication with them letting them know what we want and what they want and that, that's where we're at over the next two weeks coach what keeps you motivated what keeps me motivated um, I mean, you know, I guess, I guess, just understanding that, you know, this this job is is a is a, is a highly profile job. Uh, understanding that, you know, we if you, if you got a chance to see the ring that we that we received last last night, you know, it, it'll it'll show you how much support that we have, you know, from the university, right? So, uh, as a champion, you know, you wake up like that every single day, right? And the only people that are going to make us not champions are going to be us. Right, if we, and that's what it is. I, 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 this, me, this is my fourth time winning a national championship. I'd love to make it five this year. So that's that's what we're striving for. And and, and if, again, if you see the guys we have on the field, they're really really good. We got really really good players, but you know we got to be able to put it together. We do have some holes that we have to fill, and, and you know, and we got a, we got a really really good schedule. So those are the things for me that keep me motivated. Great job, great opportunity, great players, great people that I'm surrounded by every single day, and then again, opportunity to be the 19th head football coach here at Florida A&M. You say you spoke to uh, Coach Hubbard. Yes. What you think about his accomplishment, knowing that he, uh, Florida A&M is the only team that the national championship on the on the on the bigger level. Well, you know, we, we had we had our function this morning, right? And, and I and I asked him to join me, you know, and, and not necessarily knowing some of the things that he told me. I actually learned a lot more than what I already knew from Coach Hubbard, right? So, you know, but he but he stands on the same principles, you know. He, you know, make sure guys put, are working hard and, and playing hard and being disciplined. Some of the same things that a lot of good coaches have those same principles, and you can tell why he had so much success here. So, you know, great to hear from him. You know, he was one of our honorary coaches that we had today, and you know, it's always great to see a guy that's in the Hall of Fame, that's had success here. You know, and now obviously I had an uncle that played at 
Ohio State. So he knew my uncle. I think he he helped recruit my uncle. So there's a lot. There was a lot of moving parts when I got once I got a chance to see him. And believe it or not, him and I we actually communicate once or twice a week. So you know, so those are all things. You know, hey, Coach Hubbard is a legend. He's he's a, he's a Hall of Famer. But you know, believe it or not, when you talk to him, he wants you to treat him just like you would as a regular person. So you know, and I and I'm really really humble to be able to talk to him like that. Coach, Just for Coach, application, you have one offense, one defense. Mm -hmm. Talk about going that way versus how it had been in the past. Well, I mean, I think it's iron sharp as iron for me, right? I wanted to see how Jalen Goss would go against, you know, Tyrese Gibson battle. I wanted to see how Shamari Gassett would go against Kendall Bowler, right? So, uh, you know, just, just give us an opportunity to compete, you know, and we did it in spots, right? But, you know, as we get later on in the year, I might, you know, I might tail off from doing that one, you know, doing the ones versus the twos, but it's a spring game. Right, you know, we I want to see the ones go against the ones. Right, I mean, we we're gonna have when we play Norfolk State, we're not gonna go against their twos, we're not gonna go against their threes. Right, so I just wanted to see how we would react against each other with 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 our ones versus with, with our ones versus the ones. Coach, on Monday uh, the NCAA transfer portal reopened. Really? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, and I know FAMU has been impacted by the portal. Um, players leave, but FAMU gains a lot from the NCAA transfer portal. Um, what is your approach to that, and uh, what are some needs that you're that you're making on the um, go after? Uh, you know, just to give us a little bit that that we can do. Well, I mean, we're definitely going to take a look at the defensive line. Obviously, that's that's the position that has hurt us the most with guys that are in the portal. Um, you know, I think it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword with, with that because, you know, while our guys are in the portal, we also have those same guys asking us, okay, hey, coach, if I come back, is there still room for me, right? So, you know, for us, portal-wise, we'll, we'll, we'll access, you know, we'll look at them. We have guys reaching out to us that, you know, we'll have a bunch of guys reaching out to us on Monday. We'll reach out to guys as well. We'll check interest. So, you know, it, it, it's... Uh, if you if it's if we act chaotic, then it becomes a chaotic process. Well, we don't want that. We have certain ideas of what we want our guys to look like, certain positions of what we want them to play. So we'll kind of hone in on what we really, really want, and then ID those guys. And once we ID those guys, then it's time to get them on visits. And believe it or not, once we get them in Tallahassee, the job is done. We can get them to Tallahassee and then take them where we need to take them to certain places on this town and let them watch how much of a college town this is, get them around our fans and get them around our alumni. You know, you know, a lot of times, you know, the, the case is pretty much closed. We got, you know, we got eight guys that are up here this weekend. You know, it looks like all eight of those guys are going to be guys that we are ultimately going to put, pick the, rat, pick, excuse me, ultimately pick the Rattlers, right? So if we can continue to do that. We get, we got another six to eight guys that we need from all those other positions. We should be in, a, we should be in good shape. Was there? Oh, go ahead. Oh, and uh, I know a, a, a hot question right now is everybody want to know your assessment of the quarterbacks. Uh, how you how you feeling coming out of the spring game? Well, you know, I, I told you three weeks ago I wasn't gonna make any decisions, and that has not changed. Um, I thought Junior and Daniel did a really really good job in the spring. Um, if if we had to say who was going to be the be the quarterback on the first play of the game against Norfolk State. I can tell you this right now, we'd probably come out with two quarterbacks on the field, right? And we would do all that just to mess with the media. You know what I mean? But ultimately, you know, we, they, they, those two guys did a really, really good job. We, you know, we're not going to make any decisions. You know what I mean? We, you know, we, for, for not because of those two guys didn't necessarily separate themselves, but, you know, I think, I think both guys did well. You know, if you saw today, Junior made some really, really good passes. Daniel made some really, really good passes as well. So I think we, I think we can wait and see who that quarterback would be um, as, as we kind of navigate through the summer. One more question for me. Um, defense. I know it's a defense. I know you caught a few interceptions during the spring. Yeah, I'm, I'm good, though. You can't, you can't really compare the other guys. <laughs> and and it, it seemed like it rolled off on your DBs a little bit. I saw them get their head in, head in and get some picks on. Um, uh, saw Andre Powell get in and uh, get some interceptions, too. You talk about them. Today. Well, you know, we, we got an experienced group. You know, those are those are guys that made plays for us when we were making, you know, while we were running, you know, making that run for the national championship. So Andre Powell's a guy that sat behind, you know, Javon Morgan, right? Javon Morgan. So now it's his opportunity to make some plays. Extremely number two, Tate didn't necessarily make as many plays today, but I was extremely excited with his communication and getting us lined up. You know, Cumberbatch had an interception. I want to say Amari Lee had an interception today, number 19. So, you know, that that's another reason why I want to go the good on good, right? So our, our DBs get a chance to go against the, the number one or number two quarterback that we have on our team and, you know, see how they can react against the gas sits and the other players that are the really, really good offensive players that we have. I have a question. Um, 
What is your message to the Rattler Nation as you conclude the spring game and the spring training? Well, we, you know, we, we spring practice is done. Um, you know, I, I think everyone knows that it's time for us to, you know, hop into the portal and, and take a look at the portal and take a look at the players that can help us get to that next step. And believe me, you know, there's a lot more players that want to be here at Florida A&M than, than people know. And, uh, and, and our product will be either equal or better than it was last year. So we're, we're, you know, we're gonna be a good football team. Believe me, we'll be a really, really good football team. And it's not because of the guys that we have in the portal, it's the guys that we currently have that are still here with us now, right? Will we go into the portal to help our football team get better? Yes, we will. But we also have guys that are in the portal that they, you know, they're in the portal not because of, not because of their dislike of FAMU. They're just in the portal to see what maybe they can maybe get at that group of five or power five level. If it doesn't work out for them, guess where they'll be? They'll be right here back at Florida A&M. So, you know, those, those are the things that I'm, that I'm okay with. You know, you have other places when guys get into the portal, they're leaving because of a coach or they don't like it. The guys that are in the portal right now, I speak to them every single day. Their communication is great. I'm with them. I understand them. I'm rooting for them. Coaches are calling me about the about the guys that are in the portal. I'm giving them. I'm giving them the honest truth about all of them. So, Rattler Nation, believe it or not, if we don't have them, we're gonna still be good because we're gonna find somebody to replace them. If they do stay, we're gonna still be good. So, hey, the expectations are the expectations. I know I used to hear Coach Simmons say all the time, the standard is the standard. We know that. We understand that, and we'll be ready to play once we get ready to once we play against Norfolk State in Atlanta, Georgia. All right. All right. Thank you guys. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate it, Thank coach. you. Y'all be good.